Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, the 6th of June, the 70th anniversary of D-Day. The day that began the end of the war in Europe, where so many people paid the ultimate sacrifice. We're going to be joined later in the show with Alex Jones, as well as with Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Group. We're going to be talking about taking control of your individual health. And why should you do that? It's, it's not just for your health benefits. There are many other things that are, that are pulled in here, as we're reminded by some of the breaking news today. And a couple of uh, stories on InfoWars. The first one by Paul Joseph Watson. A new medical law is mandating private conversation with a child before every doctor visit. You need to take control of your health care because you don't want to be pulled into this metastasizing surveillance state. Another article out today on InfoWars from John Rappaport. Obama says, Obamacare, watch out, here comes predictive modeling. They're going to be using all kinds of metadata about your medical history to infer things about your private life. You're going to be under a microscope if you have to participate in this government-run healthcare system. But this is very, very egregious. Not only can they get into your life, they can basically destroy your family if they're going to mandate this. And this lady who went there was told that there was no way for her to opt out of a private consultation with her 17-year-old daughter. She was told that uh, that was a new law. She had no other options, but uh, this is a, an amazing story. We're going to go into that. We also have a breaking story about a uh, shooting in a Seattle Christian school. It was stopped by one brave person. Now, this guy did not have a gun. He had pepper spray, but he was able to uh, stop the shooting. Three people have been wounded there. Uh, one died, and so the question is, in my mind, I don't know the details of this. I don't know the timing of this. The question in my mind is, if he had had a gun and been on site, would he have had to wait until the gunman was reloading before he could have stopped this? Would he have had to wait for the gunman to get off so many shots before he could have stopped this? We always say the only way that you stop a bad man with a gun is with a good man with a gun or a good man who waits until the guy has to reload. It all, there are many people out there, as this young man would do, would lay down their lives to save other people. He's a hero. His name is John Mice, and uh, he's reported to be a devout Christian. This is a Christian school, an excellent student. Uh, he took this guy on essentially unarmed and took him down. But we know that if people have concealed carry, if they have the ability to protect themselves, they will also protect others. We're also going to be covering, of course, D-Day. We're going to be talking about what it meant. And we're going to be talking about the hypocrisy of the Obama administration. Of course, he's there today in France with these ceremonies. And as they're praising the veterans who did this 70 years ago, Many of them are dead, of course, but uh, as he's praising them, we see everything that's happening with Bergdahl to the Veterans Administration, new information today about 18 people dying at a VA on a waiting list, about uh, almost 2,000 who were told they were on a waiting list and they never were put on a waiting list. We also have some breaking news. Again, this, this is not only the 70th anniversary of D-Day today, but yesterday was the one-year anniversary of the Snowden documents. We have even more verification, this time from one of the large cell phone carriers in the UK, Vodafone, talking about how the government there and governments all over the world, essentially, are setting up their own private rooms to tap into phone calls. And we always hear that it's just about metadata. And that would be bad enough if that were true. But they talk about the fact that they are grabbing phone conversations, text messaging, and Vodafone is tired of it. They don't like this situation. They're trying to get the public to be aware of where this is leading. And you know, where it's eventually leading is exactly what we're seeing with this new medical law in Michigan mandating 
that they come into your family's life. There is no privacy for us anymore. They're constantly coming after us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from seven to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulting us. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. This is Leanne McAdoo for InfoWarsLife.com. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, master herbologist and chief formulator behind the InfoWars Life products. Dr. Group, what have you been hearing from women who've started taking super female vitality? You know, we've heard the reviews and feedback from super male vitality from emails to even excited callers on the radio. Now, the answer for women is here. A new formulation specifically designed for the female body, super female vitality delivers 10 key herbs that work synergistically to revitalize the unique biology of women. I'm so glad that you guys made this for women. When he brought me home the bottle of Super Female, it had tons of energy, tons of motivation, a lot of drive. My husband thinks I've been in a better mood. Our relationship, all I can say, is it's a lot better now. I've just started taking Super Female Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. Supplies are limited, so secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or dial 1-888-253-3139. Waging war on corruption, it's Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Friday, June 6, 2014, the 70th anniversary of D-Day, the beginning of the end of the war in Europe and the amazing sacrifice that people paid as they jumped into just continuous gunfire is, is just amazing even today. And there are some veterans who are still alive. As a matter of fact, CNN had a story with a 93-year-old uh, veteran. He was 23 when he parachuted onto the beach, and uh, he parachuted onto the beach at 93. At 23, he was one of the older guys in his unit. Most of the guys that were there were teenagers. It was teenagers that were dying that day on Normandy. And he said, of course, uh, it was much easier this time because nobody was shooting at him, <laughs> even though he was 93. And they talk about heroes. You know, we still have heroes. There's a story that's coming out of the shooting yesterday in Seattle at the Seattle Pacific University, a Christian university. A fellow named John Mice, uh, I believe if I'm correcting, his, if I'm spelling his name correctly, it's uh, M-E-I-S. They said he had a habit of carrying pepper spray. And as the shooter at the university was shooting, he had wounded three people, one of whom subsequently died. The guy began reloading his shotgun and this guy saw his opportunity 
sprayed him with pepper spray, and he and other students jumped on him and subdued him and stopped the shooting. Of course, that's what we were always saying. Good people stop bad people from doing things. And as long as we have a society where there are good people who outnumber the bad people, people who will risk their lives just like this young student did, we are better off having our own firearms. The question I look at when I look at this is like, I wonder if he had had a firearm instead of pepper spray, if he had been able to come after this guy while the guy still had a loaded gun because he had a loaded gun, if he could have taken him down from a distance, would it have saved that life? Would those three people have been shot? Would that one person have died? Um, I don't know. I don't know the, the facts of the case. Uh, of course, that was a question we asked about the Fort Hood shooting. Jakari and Kit Daniels asked the uh, general that. They said, you know, how long did it take to get? Oh, we were very happy with how long it took the police to get there. It only took them 10 minutes. Well, in that amount of time, a lot of people can get shot. And they disarm our soldiers. They want to disarm the public. But today on the 70th anniversary of D-Day and the heroes that were there, we see that we still have heroes amongst our midst. And we're going to be talking later in the show about the hypocrisy of Obama being at Normandy, honoring these vets at the same time that he is pushing and trying to start more conflict. Not only reviving the Cold War, but pushing it to a point where it could very well erupt into a third world war. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the, uh, what's behind that. We're going to talk about taking control of your individual health. We're going to have Anthony Gucciardi, Dr. Group, and Alex is going to join us in the third hour because there is an amazing story that is up on Infowars.com from Paul Joseph Watson about a new medical law that is mandating private conversations with children before every doctor visit. But before we get to that, I want to talk about another story that's up by Paul Joseph Watson. That's a sheriff calling Homeland Security on a journalist just because he requested public records. Now, yesterday we talked about the one-year anniversary of the Snowden leaks, the beginning of the documents. I say leaks, the, the, the beginning of the revelation of these documents. He has been criticized as a spy. He's, they've, we've seen people like Newt Gingrich say he needs to be brought back as a spy, executed. Others have called for his imprisonment because he exposed criminal actions of the government. They don't want you to know anything about what they do. They, just, they think that they should have all knowledge, however, about everything that you do. Many people have said, well, I, I don't care if the government looks at everything that I do. Well, you better care because they're going to, in many cases, misconstrue what they learn about you through metadata. Maybe even through your conversations. We talked about, when we were talking about uh, Ed Snowden's anniversary, we talked about how a British couple who was uh, coming to visit America, talked about how they were going to dig up Marilyn Monroe, and they were stopped by the people at the airport. They were detained for, I think, 24 hours, eventually sent home without being allowed into America. Uh, the government authorities did not see the sarcasm in that. There are many ways that you could get in trouble with just a false positive, but why should we live our life as an open book to the authorities anyway? Why is it that everything that they do is secret, because, but everything that we do is open. At the Bilderberg meeting, one of the topics was, does privacy exist? Well, no, actually it doesn't, because those people are some of the key players making sure that it doesn't exist. When they went there, they brought paper documents with them. They met in a hotel that they had evacuated days before and scanned for any listening devices, any bugging devices. They understand the importance of privacy. That's why they want it and they want to take it away from you. But look at how this has gone even one step farther. Not only are they going after a journalist, in this case in Tennessee, who is trying to get information about public records through a freedom of information request. He's trying to get information about what's going on in a prison. He believes that there is abuse going on at this prison. And so he requests the information. And what does he get? He gets harassment from the sheriff. Listen to this story. The Marshall County Sheriff's Office apparently doesn't feel it has to comply with the law. He's an editor for the Prison Legal News and has been working on a piece about complaints coming out of the jail. He's suing Sheriff Norman Dalton for refusing to release public records of alleged questionable practices in the prison system. It included uh, policies regarding medical care for inmates, 
um, the contract of the jail with uh, phone companies to provide phone services for inmates, the grievance procedure and process used at the jail for inmates who raise complaints. Not only did the sheriff's office deny those requests, Sheriff Dalton admitted on the witness stand to ordering background checks.